In today's video, we'll look at both Agenda 47 and Project 2025 and go over a few of the stunning proposals within both of them and how they are designed to radically transform America. We'll begin with Agenda 47, put out by the Trump campaign in 2023, as it's basically just talking points accompanied by him on video. All of the Agenda 47 videos are on DonaldJTrump.com in case you'd like to watch them. There are 47 videos in total, thus the Agenda 47 name, and which obviously corresponds to his potentially being the 47th president. A number of the videos do overlap on the subject covered, so clearly they were just aiming for the number 47, rather than having 47 specific policy ideas. Of those 47 videos, there are roughly two dozen unique policy proposals, some of which could fairly be described as a bit out there, such as 10 freedom cities and flying cars on America's roadways. These are the kind of big picture ideas that Trump is known for. Other videos are aimed at glorifying America, such as the American Academy proposal, which according to Trump will be an online university funded from billions of dollars raised by, in his words, taxing, fining, and suing excessively large university endowments. In several of these videos, Trump also gets into his plans to end birthright citizenship, his desire to greatly expand and update the U.S. military, and even how he will prevent World War III and bring peace to the world. Most concerning, however, are specific proposals that are aimed at vastly expanding presidential power, thereby radically changing the kind of country America will be. Those proposals often overlap in different videos, but can be summed up as covering six specific areas. Number one, Trump will have authority over federal agencies. Trump and those around him believe in what's called the unitary executive theory, the idea that Article Two of the Constitution gives the president complete control of the executive branch so Congress cannot empower agency heads to make decisions or restrict the president's ability to fire them. In fact, during Trump's first administration, he specifically said how Article 2 allows him to do whatever he wants. Then I have an Article 2 where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that. In Agenda 47, independent regulatory agencies, such as the FCC and the FTC, among others, would be under presidential control and unable or unwilling to pass any legislation that is contrary to what the president wants. Furthermore, since the heads of these federal agencies would be appointed by Trump and thus would be hardcore loyalists to Trump, they would already know exactly what type of legislation he wants or doesn't want. Agenda 47 seeks to have these agencies become a virtual rubber stamp for the policies that are in accordance with what Donald Trump desires. Number two. Trump will have authority to bypass Congress. In the Agenda 47 videos, Trump says that he will use the president's long-recognized impoundment power to squeeze the bloated federal bureaucracy for massive savings. And indeed, all presidents have had the power of impoundment up until Richard Nixon. In 1972, Nixon attempted to impound funds on an environmental project he opposed, the same project which Congress had previously overridden Nixon's veto. Congress, in turn, believed that Nixon was abusing his authority to impound the funding of only those programs he didn't like. 
As a result, the Impoundment Control Act of 1974 was passed by Congress, which effectively removed the impoundment power of the president and required him to obtain congressional approval if he wants to rescind specific government spending. Nixon ended up signing the bill because his administration was then embroiled in the Watergate scandal and he was unwilling to provoke Congress. The Supreme Court would later rule in 1975 that the impoundment power cannot be used to frustrate the will of Congress under such circumstances. However, all recent presidents have supported the restoration of the impoundment power, albeit with some modifications, but outside of a brief ability to do a line-item veto in the mid to late 1990s, presidents still do not have that power. Trump's lawyers now believe they can get the Impoundment Control Act completely overturned through their appointees on the courts or even through new legislation if they are able to take both branches of Congress in the November elections. This means that rather than a limited power to impound funds in certain cases, a President Trump will be able to simply refuse to spend any congressional appropriation he wishes, thus giving himself the power to starve any government program he doesn't care for. This would enable Trump and those in his administration to effectively gut the Environmental Protection Agency, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the Labor Department, and any other federal agency or project that does not align with what he wants. By extension, Trump could even attempt to redesignate those funds to other programs that he or his supporters deem important, something he already did in his first term as funds for the military were redirected to his border wall project. Number three, Trump will rein in the free press. Donald Trump has always had a love-hate relationship with the media. While he loves the constant attention, he bristles at any criticism, labeling it as fake news. And the best way to fight all of this fake news? In Trump's opinion, it is to change the libel laws so that media outlets can be sued. We are going to take a strong look at our country's libel laws, so that when somebody says something that is false and defamatory about someone, that person will have meaningful recourse in our courts. Changing the libel laws would potentially mean that anonymous sources would be revealed, or members of the media could be jailed if they refuse to comply. It would have a devastating effect on the media's ability to criticize Trump, which is exactly what he wants. But Trump goes even further in Agenda 47, where he refers to the censorship cartel that must be destroyed. He states, I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk revising Section 230 to get big online platforms out of censorship business. Section 230 is widely credited with allowing the internet to develop as it has as it provides basic immunity for online services and how content is generated by its users. Revising Section 230 in conjunction with changes to libel laws would effectively cause online services, including social media platforms like YouTube, to tamp down on content that they could potentially be sued over. That means that social media platforms that allow content that is critical of the government or critical of one specific person would be at risk of being sued by those who are supporters for that government or supporters for that one specific person. But in addition, social media platforms would be under pressure to allow more content that is filled with deliberate misinformation and conspiracy theories, for example, the Q nonsense, as they would be less likely to remove them under fear of being sued for censorship. In other words, without the protection of Section 230, 
social media platforms will be under a great deal of pressure to remove content that a potential Trump administration doesn't like, and they will also be under pressure to allow more content that is misleading, hateful, or even government propaganda. With these changes, a virtual tsunami of misinformation would be coming to social media, and it will not only make the truth harder to find, but it will serve to glorify Donald J. Trump. Number four, Trump will use the Justice Department on his enemies. The Department of Justice was established by President Grant after the Civil War in part to enforce federal laws protecting the rights of people who had recently been freed from slavery. However, after Richard Nixon tried to use it against his enemies, Congress passed the Ethics in Government Act in 1978, which put a wall of separation between the DOJ and the White House. Agenda 47, to paraphrase Ronald Reagan, would tear down that wall. Trump is currently embroiled in a host of legal problems, at least some of which are of his own doing, but which he places blame entirely on the Biden administration. And Trump's supporters have the same view. It's lawfare against Trump to get him out of the presidential race. But one thing worth remembering is that Donald Trump is a notoriously vengeful man. And when he is attacked, he strikes back ten times harder. He has already said that if he doesn't receive full immunity as a former president, it will be open season on the Biden administration. This isn't new. Trump has often talked about imprisoning his political opponents, as well as the prosecutors and judges involved in his legal cases. He believes the Department of Justice was used against him, and thus he will use the DOJ against his enemies. And Trump has an enemies list a mile long, and has already told us that he intends to, in his words, root out the communist, Marxist, fascist, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. In reality, these people are those who have opposed him in recent years. In Agenda 47, Trump has proclaimed his intention to go farther than Nixon ever imagined in using the Department of Justice to exact personal revenge against the people he perceives as his enemies. And to help identify who his enemies are, Trump has proposed the so-called Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which he said will declassify and publish all documents on deep state spying, censorship, and abuses of power. Here's where it gets scary. Trump has often stated that his enemies have committed treason and that the penalty for treason is death. So we are setting up a scenario where all of those identified as having committed treason by his Truth and Reconciliation Commission will be executed. Number five, Trump loyalists will be throughout the federal government. In October of 2020, Donald Trump made a move to purge the federal workforce by creating a new Schedule F employment category. The idea was to redesignate as many as 50,000 civil servants as political appointees and then fire anyone deemed insufficiently loyal to Donald Trump. Trump's plans were never implemented, however, as he lost the election and in 2021, new President Joe Biden quickly revoked Trump's executive order upon taking office. That could be, however, just a temporary reprieve. In Agenda 47, Trump revealed plans to immediately reimpose Schedule F in his second term, allowing him to fire tens of thousands of career servants and saturate the government bureaucracy with hardcore Trump supporters. The Office of Personnel Management 
which is an independent agency that manages the United States Federal Civil Service, has attempted to strengthen worker protections for federal employees by making it more difficult for a potential Trump administration to re-implement Schedule F. However, as I mentioned a few moments ago, Trump and those around him have an expanded view of his power as president, and he would simply fire the head of the Office of Personnel Management and nominate someone who would be willing to allow Schedule F to proceed. But even in the case of a divided Congress preventing his new nominee from being confirmed, Trump has already made unprecedented use of the acting designation, which has allowed him to choose anyone he likes on a temporary basis. I sort of like acting, Trump said in 2019. It gives me more flexibility. The potentiality of tens of thousands of Trump loyalists spread throughout government bureaucracy would end any possibility that people in the government will push back against Trump the way they did during his first term. Even more, Trump has also made it clear that his new cabinet will be filled with hardcore loyalists like Stephen Miller, Jeffrey Clark, Cash Patel, and others such as Michael Flynn and Steve Bannon. In other words, in a second Trump term, the guardrails will be gone. Number six, the Trump police state. In Agenda 47, Donald Trump is casting himself as the law and order president. But in reality, he and those around him have so many plans for a massive, intrusive, authoritarian government that it can only be described as a police state. For starters, he intends to round up and detain millions of undocumented immigrants. Since current ICE detention facilities are insufficient to hold that many people, Trump plans on building massive new detainment camps to house these people while they await deportation flights. Trump has talked about using both the National Guard and the military to not only police the border, but to scour American cities and towns looking for immigrants to deport, even though presidents are legally barred from using the military as a domestic police force. Trump also plans to make it easier for police to arrest citizens by restoring stop and frisk, proposes taking homeless people from cities and putting them in camps, and wants the federal government to quickly execute those convicted of drug trafficking without further due process or appeals. But while Agenda 47 gives broad outlines of a few of the proposals that the Trump campaign seeks to implement in his second term, it pales in comparison to the stunning detail and frightening potential of Project 2025. Project 2025 is a comprehensive transition plan organized by the Heritage Foundation and is designed to guide the next GOP presidential administration. It is the conservative movement's most detailed policy and staffing proposal to date. Project 2025's transition plan is more than 900 pages and is entitled the Mandate for Leadership, the Conservative Promise. Thus, while many of the stated goals of Project 2025 echo Agenda 47, it is significantly more developed in almost every way. That matters because Project 2025 has the backing of virtually the entire conservative movement and connections to numerous former Trump officials and advisors. This means that in a new administration, Trump and his allies will almost certainly rely on its policies and personnel recommendations. While Project 2025 states that its transition plan is for the next GOP presidential administration, its connection to former Trump officials and advisors demonstrates that it views Trump 
as the perfect instrument to get all of its proposals implemented. That is because most of the proposed changes to the federal government can only be implemented by a president who is willing to push the envelope on what power the executive branch has. And in Donald Trump, they have a man who has already demonstrated a willingness to do just that. Project 2025's plan is filled with proposals that would radically change America from eliminating many government agencies, including the Department of Education, to filling the bureaucracy with far-right political appointees. Here now are the four most concerning proposals. Number 1. Schedule F Just like Agenda 47, one of the key elements of Project 2025's administrative goals is to reinstate the executive order known as Schedule F, allowing for the immediate firing of what the project refers to as radical left ideologues and activists who are embedded in their departments. This would reclassify thousands, potentially tens of thousands, of federal employees as at-will workers and give the administration the ability to fire employees who don't agree with or follow the extreme policies outlined in Project 2025. But while Agenda 47 also covers reinstating Schedule F, Project 2025 has taken the next step and created what it calls a training academy for potential employees of the next administration. The training academy would provide aspiring appointees with the insight, background knowledge, and expertise in governments to immediately begin rolling back destructive policy and advancing conservative ideas in the federal government. The training currently consists of four online courses on subjects such as Conservative Governance 101 and the Administrative State and the Regulatory Process. The goal is to prepare and equip future political appointees now to be ready on day one of the next conservative administration. In other words, not only would reinstating Schedule F allow the new Trump administration to fire thousands upon thousands of federal employees, but Project 2025's training academy would have them immediately replaced with political appointees fully in line with the Trump agenda. Often overlooked is the fact that Schedule F appointees could be required to swear loyalty to the president even though it would be in conflict with their constitutional obligation to swear a loyalty oath to the U.S. Constitution. Thus, in the effort to cripple the so-called deep state by purging tens of thousands of federal employees, Project 2025 would create a de facto Trump state by filling those positions with men and women loyal to Donald J. Trump. Number two, the death penalty. Similarly to how Agenda 47 talked about instituting the death penalty for drug dealers and human trafficking, Project 2025 proposes that the next conservative president should enforce the death penalty where appropriate and applicable. It euphemistically calls for the next conservative administration to do everything possible to obtain finality for the 44 prisoners currently on federal death row. Obtain finality, of course, means to put them to death as soon as possible. This is in line with what Trump has already done, as he rushed through 13 federal executions in the final months of 2020 as his administration came to a close. This is a stunning number compared to the combined total of three federal executions in the preceding 60 years. But where this gets scary is that Project 2025 calls for election-related offenses, which Trump and his hardcore supporters talk about all the time, 
to be reassigned to the criminal division of the DOJ rather than staying within the civil rights division where they now reside. This change would not only allow a potential Trump administration to allocate more resources for investigations into alleged voter fraud, it would enable the criminal division of the DOJ to charge people with treason. And we all know what Trump wants to happen to people convicted of treason. Number three, expansion of presidential powers. Project 2025 seeks to place the entire executive branch of the U.S. federal government under direct presidential control, eliminating the independence of the Department of Justice, the Federal Communications Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, and other agencies. This plan is in full agreement with Agenda 47, as it bases its presidential proposal on the unitary executive theory, arguing that Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution vests executive power solely in the president. And as a reminder, Trump stated in 2019 that Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution granted him the right to do whatever he wanted as president, which is a common claim by supporters of unitary executive theory. It also bears repeating that the sweeping changes to the federal government under the unitary executive theory are only possible if the president is a man who is willing to push the boundaries on what he can and cannot do. Or, to put it another way, a president who sees himself as being above the law. Number four, Christian nationalism. Throughout Project 2025, there is an undercurrent of religious fervor, a desire to put Christianity at the center of American government and society, often employing Christian nationalist talking points and narratives to support its policy proposals. In fact, Project 2025 is partnered with the Center for Renewing America, the primary Christian nationalist political organization in the U.S., and which is led by former Trump official and Heritage alumnus Russ Vout. Vout's organization is headed by one of Project 2025's top advisors, and his Center for Renewing America lists Christian nationalism as one of the major priorities of a second Trump term. His organization is also listed as a member on Project 2025's advisory board. But Project 2025's version of Christian nationalism is heavily influenced by the New Apostolic Reformation, the evangelical and charismatic movement which basically worships Donald Trump. And along with the NAR comes a generous amount of Seven Mountains Mandate and QAnon nonsense. If all of that wasn't enough, Project 2025 describes what they call four broad fronts that will decide America's future, with the very first one being to restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. That statement might sound vaguely familiar, and it's because it echoes what is commonly referred to as the 14 words of white supremacy, which are, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. Thus, Project 2025 not only desires that Christian nationalism be the foundation of America, but those that are on its advisory board have connections to blatantly non-Christian beliefs, such as those in the New Apostolic Reformation, the Prosperity Gospel, the QAnon Delusion, and even white supremacy. Perhaps most importantly, we should note how many of the same forces have aligned themselves to produce both Agenda 47 and Project 2025. But why would they do that? What do they hope to gain? Under the guise of restoring America to greatness, 
both Agenda 47 and Project 2025 are tapping into two very powerful undercurrents on the political right. First, there are those on the right who want what is referred to as the Red Caesar, the strong man who will force the necessary changes onto the American bureaucracy in order to restore it to a constitutional republic. Second, the growing segment of conservatives who are pining for Christian nationalism, who are wrapped up in the idea that Christians need to not only strongly influence but to control the government as much as possible. Those two forces have poisoned the Republican Party in recent years, and yet, in order to fully realize their goals, they both need a man in the White House who is unafraid to push the boundaries of presidential power, who will do whatever he wants. They have that man in Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump is completely unlike any other figure on the world scene. The combination of his mouth of a lion, his worldwide fame, his flaunting his wealth, his abject vileness, and his extreme ego all add up to form a man who is the epitome of the things of this world. Even more than that, Trump's ability to pit one person against another is unparalleled. He has divided families, turned lifelong friends against one another, and been able to rip the bandages off of America's wounds for his own benefit. But Trump's willingness to divide and conquer in order to promote himself above all others is exponentially better if he is aligned with people who want to give him all the power he so desperately craves. And that is exactly what is coming. The plans outlined in Agenda 47 will turn the Department of Justice and the FBI into instruments of Trump's revenge and should send shivers down the spine of anyone who cares about the rule of law. Project 2025 consist of detailed plans that will allow Donald Trump to function as a dictator by completely eviscerating many of the restraints built into our system. All of these things, Agenda 47, Project 2025, and Trump's extraordinarily unique character traits will result in what can only be described as a dictatorship headed up by a man who is seeking extreme vengeance and who desires to glorify himself above all others. In his second term, Trump will no longer be constrained by those who know better, who have the best interest of the country at heart, who understand the balance of power between the three branches of government, and who know the difference between good and evil. Instead, he will be surrounded by those who want to completely dismantle the federal bureaucracy, who want to bring Christian nationalism into the town square, and who want to give Donald J. Trump all the power he has so desperately craved for his entire life. As a result, the United States of America, a nation that was founded by deists and Freemasons, will become the final beast kingdom of the Antichrist.